back to the Elise DeLucci Show, episode 66. We're here in my living room, as usual. How you doing? Memorial Day weekend was a fucking bust. How about you? Oh, my God. Oh, so excited. I was so excited for Memorial Day weekend. I thought the pandemic's winding down. We're all going to get to just let our hair down, wear no bras, run around, have a great time. And then it's like torrential downpours if you're in the New York area. Oh, so depressing. I told my daughters that we would go somewhere, and I booked this uh, crappy motel out in South Hold on the North Fork, and, um, you know, I don't even know. It was just some dump, like, literally on the side of the road. It was across the street from the beach. I think it was, like, the South Hold Motel, honestly. (laughs) But my friend said it was clean and it was fine. I couldn't get any other rooms. I tried. I tried everywhere. You know, I looked in Garney's. I looked at... uh, uh, and then I looked at the one, st- the yacht club that, you know, they took it over. But well, a bunch of places out there. Surf club. I couldn't get a room anywhere, anywhere. And thank God I wasn't able to get a room because one, the rooms were $1,100 a night. Okay, so they could fucking keep it. And two, and two, it was a torrential downpour. And half the places I was looking at, if they did have a room, you know, it was like non-refundable. So my friend, Nick, uh, who has a summer place out on the North Fork, he was like, oh, try this little motel. It's going to be great. So, of course, I try. Lady was nice enough. She calls me a couple days before the reservation, and she says, ma'am, it's going to rain. Do you want to keep your room? And I said, rain? No, of course I don't want to keep my room. So I, I canceled it. What kind, of, what, what kind of customer service is that? Is that not a beauty? Meanwhile, all these big-time hotels, you'd think that they would have someone on staff to call people and say, you know, the weather's not going to be so nice. Would you like to take your reservation and move it to another time? No, of course not. They're just a bunch of greasy bastards. But this little rinky-dink shithole out there, they call me up, and I, I said, you know, that's so nice of you. And she says, well, I know you're a mother with the young kids, and I just figured if you came all the way out here from Manhattan for Memorial Day weekend and it rained, you'd probably really be disappointed. You know, the room's not that big. And I I was like, you know what? I am not going to stay there this weekend, but I am going to come there. Don't worry, because this was the nicest phone call I've ever gotten from the hospitality industry, okay? Which remind me when I had another, I had another, I had a horror show experience, my other opposite end of, of the hospitality, but I got to do my fast fa- fact of the week. Otherwise, you know, I'm just going off. <laughs> <laughs> Just going off. Fact, over half of all of online purchases are now used from a mobile device. I read that in AdAge. I subscribe to AdAge for my, my job, my full-time job, and um, you know, which is like a trade paper for the advertising and marketing industry, and for it meant heavy focus on digital. And um, yeah, half of all of our purchases are now using mobile devices. Let me tell you something. I know last week we talked about websites and stuff. Google has an algorithm change that happened in uh, May 2021 that they're actually only ranking websites now looking at the mobile sites first, not even desktop. But you know what? It's funny because that makes total sense. Half of the purchases are are, are on on this phone, right? I mean, because I don't know about you. I couldn't think of anything worse than sitting on my couch with my my big laptop in front of me. I do everything on the phone. Everything. In fact, if it's not on the phone, I don't want anything to do with it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget I had a boss, like, maybe, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, and he said to me, he's like, Elise, the app store and apps, it's just a fad, okay? Nobody uses the apps. I'm sorry. I, I, love, I love a good app. I love a good app. I love a good, you know, oh, I, lo- I love a good app organization. I don't know why I can't organize my underwear drawer, but forget it. My apps on my phone, I got them all in little containers, I got social media, um, financial research. I got a bank and money container with all of my stuff. Creative services. Oh, I little little folder, like yeah, like like a real nerd. Anyway, anywho, so yeah, Memorial Day weekend. What a bust! I wonder how yours was. Did you do anything fun? I uh, I actually let my kids play hooky on Friday. And and my ex, what a disaster! He calls me up Thursday. First of all, okay, let me let me let me run this by. Okay, Thursday night, you know, it was a work day last Thursday, and I had a babysitter, and and I had a spot, a, a show to do in Midtown West, and I'm about to get on stage at eight thirty. My phone rings eight o'clock, and it's this motherfucker calling me up, and he's like, and he's like, uh, excuse me, 
Uh, no, actually, let me do his voice. Uh, excuse me, Elise, I just spoke to the girls, and the girls said that they're not going to school tomorrow because you are taking them to the aquarium. Is this the truth, Elise? And I'm literally like, oh, my God, I fucking hate you. And I said to him, will you let me live a little bit, and will you let these kids live a bit, little bit? I said, what are you, I'm not even married to you anymore, and you got to micromanage me. Go away. This is why we're divorced. Leave me alone. I said, I'm about to go on stage. You're going to put me on a fucked up headspace now. All I'm going to want to do is get on stage and complain about my ex-husband. And to be honest, I probably should have done it because I would have had a better set than the shit set I had because he had to get all up in my headspace. Anyway, anyway, okay? So here's the thing. Now, look, Friday is almost like a holiday. It's Memorial Day weekend. If I was going out to the Hamptons, I would have left you know, early. This I would have left the city early. I probably would have picked my kids up a couple, you know, hours early from school. But I figured the whole weekend was rained out. So let me take them to the New York Aquarium in Brooklyn, and uh, and, and and then I got and I got this Budinski calling me up. You know, upsetting my plans. But I went. I did want, and then you know, of course, I I then he. But he's 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 so he's so. Uh, I don't even know the word. He's so. Uh, you know, like you know when somebody's like that, you just like uh, I fucking uh, I hate you. This is like what it's like. I he made me feel so guilty. So when you know Friday morning came around, you know, and and me and the girls, we got up. It's like six thirty in the morning. Oh, my favorite time to get up. Ugh, snore not. I said to them, I was like, girls, daddy told me that you know. Um, you told him that we're missing school today. Do you want to go to school and see your friends instead of go to the aquarium? And they were like, no, we want to go to the aquarium. So, of course, I obviously took them to the aquarium. But we went to the aquarium and over the river and through the freaking woods, okay, I had this genius idea of taking them on the train from Manhattan to the aquarium in Coney Island. Okay, first of all, lots of different kinds. I mean, you know, like, listen, I don't want to judge, okay, but the people, it's just not ideal. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, People that are desperate right now in New York, okay, they're on the trains, they're on the streets. And I'm, I'm not, and listen, I'm not, I am not kidding you. I, I love public transportation. I go all over the place. I've been living in the city for 18 years. But when I went on the train and I'm, and it's going through Brooklyn, I don't even know what kind of people are coming on the train. I mean, there was a guy that walked on the train and he's in head to toe hefty bag. I mean, like, seriously? So, you know, and, and so I, probably not the best thing that I did. But we get to the aquarium. We have a nice time, whatever. And then we, I tell them we're going to go to Nathan's. We're going to have Nathan's on the boardwalk. We're going to sit outside. Just as the food comes out of Nathan's, what do you think happens? Heaven's open. Starts to pour. There's no seats inside of Nathan's, of course. Why would there be seats? So it's like me and the girls and the pouring rain and, sin and, you know, and wet hot dogs everywhere and everything stinking like hot dogs and they're screaming because they're cold. I can't even put the umbrellas because the umbrellas are flipping up. Oh, my God. It was such a shit show. And then we had to run to the train and get back on the train and get on the train like one of the people that I hate. I hate when people bring food and public transportation upset everybody else's ride. Is there nothing worse? I mean, come on, have you not been on, like, a Greyhound bus or an Express bus or, you know, whatever, and you get on the bus and you got the guy that got his Burger King Happy Meal and he sits down and he's having a hoe down and you're like, what the fuck stinks? It's like a mix of, like, this food stinks slash it's delicious and I hate you because smelling it is making me gain weight. Exactly. Exactly. I was that person. I go on the train and got hot dogs in my hand, Nathan's cheese fries, because God forbid, you know, God forbid I go there. I said to the guy at the Nathan's counter, I said, you know, these fries, they're so good. I wish sh I should get the cheese fries out. I wish I could get the cheese fries. He says, well, what's stopping you? We got the red forks. And I said, oh, my God, the red forks. The red fro fork on the Nathan's fries makes it the cheesiness taste all the better. I'll take it. Oh, man. Yeah, so we had kind of a disaster. And then... You know, we were supposed to go to, uh, you know, put through together this whole impromptu weekend. Even though it was going to rain, I thought, well, let me see if I can get some other tickets, you know. So I got tickets to the Bronx Zoo, but that was a wash. And then I was going to take them to Governor's Island. They had a, uh, a little festival with my aunt. We were going to go there, this Japanese kimono making, Japanese cultural dance, you know, kind of thing. We were going to take the ferry from the city. But, ah, that was canceled too. So, yeah, you know. It was really great. And you know what? Just what I love to do. I love to be in Manhattan in my small apartment with my two kids on a holiday weekend while they're screaming they want the beach. Oh, God. Oh, God. You know what we did? We did a lot of beating. 
Do you do beating with your kids? If you are a dad and you're listening to this father, or, or if you don't have kids, I feel like it's a great gift. Beads. It is, it is, I, I don't know why. I'm like a big kid. I love to do craft projects, but not the Pinterest annoying crafts. Like I like to do regular, just regular n- normal crafts, like Crayola crayons and construction paper and a good old pair of scissors. But, but I did, I did be, I have a bead box, which sounds like more annoying than it is, but I have a, like a big Tupperware thing filled with beads and uh, all different kinds of beads and, um, and, and stretchy elastic. And I take it out, you know, when it rains and stuff. And, and my girls, they love it. We've been doing it for a few years now. And they, you know, we make all kinds of necklaces. I get the big wood beads. But let me tell you something. I had to do a bead refill, right? I had to do a bead refill. And I, um, I found a new place um, to buy them. I was buying the beads, which is not bad. Uh, let me tell you. I was buying the beads at this website called Dollar Bead. Literally, dollarbead.com. For one dollar, they send the beautiful strands of beads, and you know it's. But they add up quick because, like, on one strand, it could be like, you know, only twelve or twenty beads. You know, you're paying a dollar for that, but it's way cheaper than if if you bought the beads in Michaels or Joanne's craft store or something. So this weekend, I had to do the bead refill, and I said, "Let me look on AliExpress." You know, one of the Alibaba sites. Let me look on AliExpress. I go to AliExpress. Uh, AliExpress.com. I, I know I spoke about it before, and I type in beads. Literally, the the most simple thing, and there was so many options of to of things to places to buy beads. And um, I ordered some. I want to know. I don't know what the vendor was that I ordered, but basically, if you type in letter beads or you know beading, I'm doing it right now. Let me see if I could tell you. There were so many adorable things, like, and they're so cheap. Like for 200 pieces of beads. 200, like, letter beads, it was, like, a dollar twenty-five. You know, because it all comes from China. The only downfall is, obviously, you got to wait for it to be delivered. So, you know, you're going to bust a little bit. But if you don't tell the kids, you know, you buy it now, you save for Easter. Nobody knows, you know? But anyway, so we did beads. We went to my mother's house. My mother's so funny when she entertains, like, my whole life. It's so random. Like, my mom, she cooks, like, we're, we're, I'm not... First generation, second generation town. My mom, um, am I my third generation? I think I'm third generation. One, two, no, I'm yeah, I'm third generation town. And my mother, my mother, she she makes the Italian food, but she also has like the most random things. Like for my confirmation, she catered in Chinese food and fried chicken. I don't even know for my party. We had a big party, 50, 60 people at the house, Chinese food and fried chicken. She's like, what? It's delicious. <laughs> but this weekend I went to her house and she had, you know, she had sausage and peppers and um, macaroni and, you know, salads and all that kind of stuff. But she also had a big, huge tray of fried chicken. I don't even ask. I, you know what? I don't even ask because then she'll she'll start thinking, like, I'm insulting her. What's the matter? You don't like. My sister made a beautiful cake, a, a butter cake. that It was very delicious. I brought corn on the cob. My mother says to me, she says, can you bring the corn over? I said, yeah, Ma, I said, I can bring corn. I said, but can I just please highlight that I live in Manhattan? I don't live in the suburbs where I could pull over on the side of the road, pull over on Route 9, okay? Pull over on, a, I don't know, one of these Long Island streets with the cute farmer's market and go get my corn. I said, like, really? So you know what I had to do? You know how I had to get my corn? I mean, how ridiculous. I, had, I was, my boyfriend was driving me downtown. We, I was, we were in the car with the kids. I had to do an errand downtown, and and he had to pull over at Whole Foods on Houston Street, okay? And I had to get out of the the car on Houston Street and go buy corn on the cob at Whole Foods. Is that not annoying? I, I, I couldn't even get the corn, like, like as if I was buying it, you know, on the side, the farm thing, because everybody's a Garvona Manhattan. There's no corns left. There's no big things of corns in the husk. There was a table full of corn, okay, and it said, Five for two dollars, and I was so happy. So, oh yes, I'm gonna get my corn experience, even though I'm on the Lower East Side, even though I'm in Whole Foods, which that store makes me so nauseous. I like the store and I like the stuff. I just, you know, it has such a stigma. But anyway, I'm I'm like more of a Sea Town girl, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so anyway, I I get to the corn table. There's like five corns in the husk. And I call my mother. I said, what do you expect me to do? And she goes, just buy them. Just buy them. And then she, I said, Ma, I said, but like, there's not even enough. I need like 12 coins. And then she says, and, and by the way, 
This is a husk-free house. You husk those corns before they come in the house because I don't want the stuff. I don't want the silks on the floor. I don't do corn husks when I have company. I'm just like, th- you are ridiculous. You are ridiculous. You and your corn are ridiculous. You know what I had to do? I had to buy, I had to buy the corn on the cob already, you know, husked in a, in a plastic wrap. You know, it was like four corns in a thing. And you know how much I had to pay for this? Three ninety nine dollars for four small pieces of corn. I had to buy three packs. I told my mom, this is extortion. I, sh- I could have, I should have, I wish you would have had me bring something else. Because at least if I was spending, you know, $15 with tax and getting a decent cake or something, I would have felt good about myself. The fact that I spent $15, okay, and I bought 12 corns doesn't make me feel good. Makes, <laughs> makes me angry. But we had a nice time. We went, we went, we went to her house and, you know, she had a barbecue. And uh, I mean, again, she's ridiculous. Like she had, my mother lives in over 55 and up community in New Jersey. And it's a cute house. And she has a barbecue in the backyard. Now I'm thinking when I'm coming to the house for the barbecue that the, I'm going to, you know, we, I know we're going to be in the house because it's raining. But I just thought she was going to be using the barbecue in the backyard. No, you know, let me tell you, I walk, I park the car. Okay, we park the car. We get out of the car. My mother's husband, because she's remarried, he, he, he picks up the garage door. Smoke starts coming out of the garage door. I said, what the hell's going on in there? And he goes, oh, oh we're barbecuing. I said, in the garage? And he's like, yeah, don't, don't, tell your mother, I, 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 don't tell your mother you're walking in this way. She wants everybody to walk in through the front door. Because now my mother's like, you know, because she doesn't watch. She, she's hiding the fact that she's what, having a barbecue in the garage. Like, like, please. So I said, I said to her husband, I said, well, wait a second. I don't see a barbecue in here, but where's the smoke coming from? And then all of a sudden, I look down, and 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 my mother's husband has a table, a, like a like a like an outdoor table, a giant piece of plywood on the table, and then two silver like tabletop barbecues and hamburgers on them. And I'm like, what the hell? And he goes, it's a charcoal grill. I'm like, on a pl- piece of plywood in the garage. And then I go in my, into my mother's house. And, you know, I couldn't keep it quiet. Come on, this is ridiculous. I said, Mom, what kind of barbecue is this? You invite us over for a barbecue. You invite people over. What is this? And she says, excuse me. I won these barbecues at the Borgata Casino. And they are just perfect. I, let me tell you something. My mother buys every, has everything from the casino. I, <laughs> I don't even know how this is possible. But my boyfriend, he's involved in planning uh, events at the casino. He does other. He owns a business in New York, but he he also helps do some event stuff at the Borgata specifically. So then my mother has a whole conversation with him, saying, you know, the Borgata's really they their quality went down on the free gifts on the gifts that people get and the stuff that you win at the casino. You know, this really went down. Everything my mother has is from the casino. The frying pans, now her, 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 her tabletop barbecue, her shoes she buys at the casino. I actually have it in my act. I say, the women that came to my baby shower, they bought their jewelry at the casino. Because, you know, you go into the casino and you think, who the fuck shops at these stores? <laughs> Who the hell needs another leopard pashmina scarf with rhinestones and a, and, a, and a bedazzled skull on the side? By the way, that was so Ed Hardy, circa 2006. Who's still buying that? Let me tell you who. My mother, that's who, okay? She loves a good casino store. She loves, I swear to God, if the Dollar Tree was in the casino, my mother would never, she would never leave. She would never leave. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. And they're so overpriced, too. So overpriced too. These these stores in the casino. You know what? She probably she probably plays the slots and she probably wins and and they could probably give her a choice. You want the cash or do you want a, a store credit into one of our boutiques? <laughs> and she probably picks the store credit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. So the weekend it was kind of a bust. You know. I mean. Ay, ay, ay. And of course, as of course, you know, just as I sit down one of the nights and I put my kids to bed, I see um, my ex's new girlfriend posting pictures of some love trip that they went on. The, 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 the mini honeymoon or something. They're not married or anything, but they might as well be because he's living with her. I, when, my, when the girls, when my daughters are with me, my ex is living living with this trollop okay he's living with her i mean can you imagine the horror you met i i said you met her six months ago stop living together knock it off you don't need to be around her this long <laughs> he's like 
He's like, you are so fucking crazy, Elise. I could do whatever the hell I want in my free time. I said, yeah, you know what? You can. I said, you could do whatever you want, but it would be nice if you told me the seriousness of about your relationship. I said, I feel like I have a right to know. And I talked about this a few weeks ago. I said, first of all, you didn't even tell me that you were serious with somebody. You didn't tell me that this girl was anything. You Next thing I know, you, my kids are FaceTiming with her on the phone around you. And then, and then on top of that, on top of that, they, they meet her while I go to Vegas and do some shows because you wanted to wait for me to beat 2,000 miles out of New York City for my kids to introduce her. Like, you know, because I don't know if you remember because he was all like, oh, it was a lovely day for an ice lolly. So I invited her to the park. Yeah, wah, wah, wah. Fuck that. You should have told me. In our agreement, we said that we were going to meet the other person's significant other and you failed. Wah, wah. So, so, okay, like now, now I have to be, I'm here with the kids screaming begging for ice cream from the ice cream man that's not available because it's a torrential downpour outside. And I go on Instagram, and I got to see a whole Love Boat special. Okay, and she's like, on this, you know, because she's British too, please. On this rainy bank holiday, I just want to go back in time and and remember my beautiful trip to St. Lucia. And I wanted to be like, you want to know what? Go fuck yourself, literally. Go fuck yourself. I haven't been on a decent island vacation in... Three years, and I got to see you with my ex-husband making me sick in your Joyce Leslie dress, and probably underneath you probably have cheap polyester iridescent thongs on. You're making me nauseous. Shut it down. I got to shut that down. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I, listen, I want the guy to be happy. And at the end of the day, if he's happy, my kids are happy and I'm happy, but I just don't want to see it. I just don't want to see it. And, you know, that's the thing. See, when... Because if you girls, if you did, you know, when you when you're with somebody for a long time, right? When we're with somebody for a long time, you know, you know how they look in pictures. You know that look of love in their eyes. You know when the guy is really smitten. Because of course, you were the girl at one time. So I see him. They're sitting on a boat. A boat. Oh, how nice. Sitting on a boat. And he's clutching her waist. And they're doing this corny smile. And he has love eyes. It was like as if he was a giant yellow British emoji and giant red hot eyes are popping out. You make me nauseous. Okay? I, you make, you're all making me nauseous. And they're probably sitting after the boat. They probably went to like little cafe, had a little breakfast wine, had a little soft boiled egg, you know, with the fancy sterling silver. Please, you know what? Please. The whole, I don't even know how I was married to this guy. You know, because I wanted to sit down and I wanted a whole smorgasbord of breakfast. Banana bread. We'd go on vacation. I want banana bread, waffles, you know, toast, butter, eggs, omelets. And then he would be there with the silver egg cup, one egg, fancy knife, slice it in half like a machete and then dip little bread finger soldiers or whatever the hell he calls them dip the gently into the the runny egg please I don't even I honestly I don't even you know what I don't even know how I don't even know how so um in other news other exciting news of the week yeah right I bought a printer from Amazon I need your opinion on this okay because this is so outrageous I couldn't even believe it I bought a printer on Amazon a month ago, an Epson printer, and it got amazing reviews. And this printer wasn't cheap, and God forbid, you know, the company I work for was like, you know what, let us buy it for you because you're working from home. No, of course not. So, you know, of course not. You know what you are? What, what is it? You, you, you are a, you're penny wise and pound foolish is what, is what you are by not buying your executives a printer. Thank you. Anyway, so I buy the printer. I splurge for it, right? Buy the Epson printer, and um, and after a month it stops working. So I call Amazon, and they say to me, "Well, we're sorry to hear that it's not working, but you know if you want to return it, you know, well, one, you're gonna have to get a box." I said, "I don't have a box." I said, "I live in a small apartment. Where do you expect me to get a box the size of a printer, the size of a milk crate? Where do you expect me to dig that box up?" I asked the super. They don't have boxes, and uh, and and then they said. Oh, and by the way, you didn't buy this product from Amazon. You brought it. You bought it from Epson, a third-party seller. So we can't give you a refund. We have to contact the third party, or you can. Let me tell you something, okay? The guy, first of all, Scott. His was his name. My custom. My customer service rep. Scott, you really are in Bangladesh, and that's not your name. Okay, that the first of all, that's your fake name, because I hear your accent coming through. Just just live your life. Be yourself. 
be the Bengali that you are and use your real name. I don't give a shit. I don't judge. But you know what? Scott, okay? Let me, I tell him, Scott, I need you to go on my Amazon account. I need you to pull down all of my purchases on Amazon from inception. I said, I'm a 15-year customer. I make all my purchases on Amazon. I buy all my food on Amazon Prime or Whole Foods Delivery. I buy everything on Amazon for the most part. They don't need to know the truth, you know? I said, I want you to go down and find from inception to today all of my purchases, export it into an Excel CSV and read me the total number because that number is so high that it's probably one of the reasons why I got divorced, the amount of money that I spend on Amazon. So I said to him, you're going to return my printer. I don't give a shit if it's through a third-party seller. Do you understand me? And you know what he's like telling me? No. And you know what? I don't know when Amazon has this take no prisoners attitude. You know what's so funny? During the pandemic, height of the pandemic, Amazon, they were being very nice. Amazon, they were taking everything back. They, they understood that deliveries were taking a long time. They were giving comps all over the place. They were letting you return stuff that you bought in 1998 from the first book that was ever published and Bezos sold on there. They were letting you return everything and anything. Then all, and, 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 and that customer service went a long way because during this pandemic, they've quadrupled, yes, true, Amazon quadrupled their revenue during the pandemic. And now this motherfucker, I don't know, the pandemic's coming to an end and he has a take no prisoners attitude. He's telling all his employees, listen, fuck them. If they buy, if they buy it through a third party seller, fuck all them. You're giving nobody refunds. We're keeping that quadruple earnings. We're going riding our ass into 2022 with that 4X on our P&L. You know what, Jeff Bezos? You're the richest man in the world. Go fuck yourself. Give me my $300 back so for my printer so I can, and send me a box while you're at it, okay? So I can return this piece of shit to you and I can buy a new printer from your own goddamn store because you have a goddamn monopoly. You know, and I have a whole fit on the phone with Scott. And it's like, you know, Scott, I told him, just, you know, you could slip something under the radar. I mean, when I was, I told I said, when I was a cashier, when I was in high school, you know how many women came over to me, scanning their groceries every week, and they would say to me, oh, the asparagus is supposed to be a dollar on sale, and it would be ringing up for four ninety nine. and I'd be like, you know what, I'll give it to you, don't worry about it. Sometimes I wouldn't even put it in the dollar, I'd just throw it in the bag. I didn't give a shit, it's not my stuff, who cares? I felt like I was doing community service. I was doing a good service. But you, Scott, I see what you so what you so scared to lose your job? Is job security a big thing over there? Just make an exception of the rule. I know you could do it, and I got this guy back and forth 20 minutes. I'm never gonna get back on my life because this motherfucker wouldn't give me my money back. And you know what? I don't even know what to do. So my boyfriend, my boyfriend, he's like, Elise. He's like, Elise, why why do you bother? He's like, I think you just like to call people up. I think you just <laughs> I think you like to just call people up and return things. I said, you're damn right I do. I said, I can't be yelling at anybody. I don't yell at my kids. I don't hit my kids. I'm not one of these crazy parents. I said, I I, I, I said, I, I can't yell at work. And I, I, I'm, I'm all in isolation all the time. Or I, I yell on stage. I said, but like, I need my outlet. I said, but I only do it because there's an injustice. This, this Amazon shit is a fucking injustice. I mean, how dare you? You see a lifetime customer, they're spending six figures at Amazon for the last 15 years. They're, every morsel of food that they put in their mouth, in their house, comes from your company. And you can't even do me a solid for $300. Fuck you. Oh, my God. Now, I wish Nordstrom sells printers because they would take this shit back in a second. Can you imagine? So, you know what? I decided I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to figure out the situation. I'm going to probably call the third party seller. I'll return it through gritted teeth or something. I don't know. And then I'm going to Best Buy. I'm going to Best Buy in person and I'm buying a printer and I'm going to carry it home on the subway <laughs> or I'll, I'll do it while I'm in work or something and I'll, and, you know, and I'll drive my car home with the printer. And I am not, I refuse, I refuse to give Amazon another penny in the printer department after this. And could you blame me? Could you blame me? They are... The, 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 sale, the seller. Can you imagine? Okay. Let me tell you something. Imagine you went into ShopRite or Pathmark. Is Pathmark still around? I thought it was still around. I don't even know. Imagine you went into Pathmark and you bought a, a, a Tropicana orange juice. Big gallon of Tropicana. And you took it home and Tropicana orange juice wasn't good. 
And you went back to Pathmark and you said, excuse me, this wasn't good. I want my $9,000 back for the, the Tropicana orange juice. Can you imagine if Pathmark said, sorry, we can't help you. Get in touch with Tropicana. Call us when it, when it works out for you. That's exactly what this is like. This is, they are passing off the customer complaint to the third party, to the people that are, have the deal. They have a deal. They have a seller and, and, and supplier agreement. The end user, the customer, shouldn't have to get involved. Oh, it's so upsetting. So upsetting. I don't even know what we're going to do. You know, Jet.com, Jet, J-E-T, came out like, I don't know, six, seven, maybe ten years ago now. They tried to go right up against Amazon. I'll never forget. Liza Landsman, she was a CMO at E-Trade. She was a client of mine. And she uh, moved over to Jet to be their CMO. And it was a big fail. Jet, their thing was like, their logo was like a smiley face, kind of like Amazon. But they their thing was purple boxes. And it, I think they only did like groceries or something. And they sent out lots of coupons like in the mail. Like, you know, join Jet and get $5 off. But it flopped. Because who could the fuck could go up against Amazon? You know who? Alibaba and AliExpress. If only they just started selling regular items and not their Chinese imports all the time. I don't know. I I I I'd be willing to switch from Amazon to, to the Baba because I can't I, I can't deal with this. Anyway. I was driving to Long Island today and um oh god. I I, I accidentally cut somebody off on the road and this guy, he's looking at me. You know when that happens? You know what happens? I was driving on the Grand Central Parkway, which is a nightmare, um, because I don't know they don't believe in doing finishing construction or something. So I'm driving from Manhattan to Long Island. I'm on the Grand Central Parkway, and I accidentally cut somebody off. I didn't really know. I'm like driving Miss Daisy driving. I mean, you know, I you know I got no kids in the car. It's the morning. I got a coffee in my hand, and I'm I, and I'm pumping, you know, like Lisa Lisa and the cult jam. I, I I I'm not paying attention really. I'm just you know I'm in the element, right? And I cut somebody off, and this guy, he he turns, he takes his head off the road, and he's turning, he turns to me, and he's like giving me the dirtiest face for what felt like ninety seconds on the Grand Central, and and it was just like you're gonna get into a crash because you're not looking at the road, you're looking to the left at me the whole time for 90 seconds. I don't know why people do this. I know you know what I'm talking about. What satisfaction do you get out of staring a hole through the car next to you? You know? What is the satisfaction? I got and you know and I'm I'm I, and I'm I'm glancing over at him periodically like can you stop looking at me like you're so hideous. I don't even want to look at you anymore. Come on, keep it moving. Like let's just keep let's keep driving. It was an accident. It was an accident. But, you know, in this day and age, I can't, you know, I, I, had a, I really couldn't look at him. If it was, like, normal, if it was not, we weren't on a parkway, maybe I'd roll down my window, say, roll it down, how funny, power the window down, say, sorry. But you know what? He could have a gun. You can't, you can't talk to people like that anymore. Everybody's crazy. Everybody's desperate, angry. They're back in the office. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Anyway, anywho, anywho. I, um, I've been seeing these people wearing these sneakers, guys and girls. I don't know if you know these sneakers. I, I know I'm so late to the party here. Um, the, the brand, it, the, the, they're called on, on Running. On Running is the brand. On Running. They're these sneakers. Regular, they look like a regular athletic sneaker, but they, the bottom has a, you know, the sole has like holes in it. Almost like it almost looks like a great kind of, not really. Um, but look them up. On running, Cloud Swift sneakers. I've been seeing people all over the Upper East Side with these sneakers. A lot of older people too, like older like 80s, 90s, run around these sneakers. But you know, they're cute. And then I saw a couple of guys wearing them in the park the other day. And I'm just like, something's, something's up here. These must be really good. Because there's no way that Yetta, who's 95 years old, doing laps around the reservoir in Central Park, is wearing these shoes, as is the cute guy that was online in front of me at Morton Williams. Like, these shoes, they're, they're good. So I look them up, and uh, they're expensive. They're 150 bucks, And um, I find this review about uh, of them on Vogue, out of all places, Vogue magazine. And they say that you, they feel, you feel like you're walking on literal clouds. 
literal clouds. This is my product of the week, by the way. This is my product. I don't have them yet. Yet. <laughs> but um, I don't know. They, they, they Apparently, they're running sneakers, but they feel like you're walking on clouds, and that's enough for me. And I don't know. The ones I've seen are black. The Vogue with the white sole. The Vogue uh, review, they're like a light blue. And you know what? I'm sorry. This is this is all about comfort this year, clearly. This is all about comfort. But you know what? Actually, I could do it. I could tell you another product. When I went to my mother's house the other day, my sister was there. And I walked in and she said, oh my God, you have the same jeans on as me. Although I thought mine were cooler, but that's <laughs> But that's because I'm the oldest sister. <laughs> so, um, no, they were, they're the, I got the new, I got these new jeans. And she also has them too. So, the, you know, she's younger, so they must be cool. <sighs> but they're gap, I can't even believe I'm about to say this, high-waisted, gap high-waisted cigarette jeans. That's the style for women, obviously. Gap high-waisted cigarette jeans. I got them in a light, a, like a light acid wash or whatever, you know, I don't know, not acid wash, like a light blue, and they have rips in them. And they, listen, they're really cute. Like, I'm not going to lie, they're cute. I mean, do I feel, do I feel like I'm an 80s throwback and I should be laying on top of a Corvette and a white, a white snake video? Yes. But you know what? That's fine. That's fine. They do come up high to my belly button or past my belly button. I do kind of feel like I'm wearing a diaper, but that's what's cool right now. And so I'm trying to get into the high-waisted jeans, but the Gap high-waisted cigarette jeans. My sister said, oh my God, I have these in every color. They are amazing. At least they're amazing. And I was like, okay. And I don't know why I'm making my sister have a gay man voice, but that's just the voice that came out. So anyway, um, yeah, but I got, they were maybe like, I don't know, 80 bucks and then, you know, or $70 and the Gap has the sale. So I wound up getting them for like 40. But um, that's them, Gap cigarette jeans. And I... Honestly, the Gap jeans, in my opinion, the quality is so good. I have no reason to buy anything other than Gap jeans unless I had a bank account like JLo, which I don't. But I hope I do one day um, from the entertainment world. Thank you very much. But yeah, Gap high-waisted cigarette jeans and on running. Look at these things. On running. I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try them out. I'm sure there's probably only an annoying place to buy these on running sneakers like Bergdorf's or something, but that's okay. That is A-okay. Well, listen, I hope that you are having, are going to have a great short week, okay? I don't have a lot of spots this week. I don't have a lot of shows this week. Saturday, uh, Sunday night, I'm actually at Broadway Comedy Club. Um, I'm doing some fundraiser. Um, I'm in this, uh, this, this, this TV show. We only shot some promo stuff at the, this point, but it's called Wise Guys. I think I I think I'm actually the only woman in it right now. I play the uh, lead guy's girlfriend, and it's not it's, it's a pilot. It's not it hasn't gone anywhere yet. They they're just shopping it around. But the writers um, are a bunch of comics. They got in touch with me. They asked me to do it. I said sure. And uh, so Sunday night they're doing this. I think some private fundraising event or something. So I'm doing some stands up there. Friday night that's Sunday night. Friday night I'm at actually in Hackensack, New Jersey. Um, at a restaurant doing some stands up and uh and Saturday night my boyfriend's like I gotta go to work for an hour and I'm like are you kidding me that means that we have no time together at night what the hell um but yeah everything's uh slow this week but hopefully hopefully after we get out of the holiday weekend things pick back up again so that's all for today's Elise Delucci show and as always I thank you for listening and I'm working I am working on um putting trying to get Anthony Rodia to to put something together I told him let's do a show together and then I did a post on it and so many people commented and uh he knows it he knows it so I have to stay on top of him if you know him and you want to message him for me feel free and say hey you should work with Elise Delucci but um Right, you know, because he has Goomba Johnny opening for him. Goomba Johnny, who's funny? Goomba, I mean, Goomba, you know, he was on K2. He was very funny. But anyway, maybe maybe that'll come one day. Anthony Rodia, I'm working on it. Quote of the day by Mark Twain. I love this quote. The two most important days of your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. I'm still finding that out. Why? I'm still finding the why out. I don't know about you, but I am. But that's all for today's Elise Delucci Show, episode 66. This is amazing. We keep it going. Leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. 
Um, tell your friends, tell your family, and thank you, as always, for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.